right. Uh, thank you for joining my SQL session. Uh, today, uh, I'd like to introduce my SQL document store, which is a new uh, way to using my SQL from application without using any SQL statements, which means my SQL server now become no SQL. I will show you uh, more details of the concrete implementation, how to use with live demonstrations. Let me introduce myself. My name is Ryusuke Kajiyama. I'm sales consulting manager for Asia Pacific region at Oracle Corporation. I joined the original MySQL company and acquired by, by Sun Microsystems and an, another acquisition by Oracle. So now we are at the part of Oracle, but still MySQL team at the Oracle Corporation is working on MySQL database only. And today I'd like to uh, uh, talk about uh, newest, uh, one of the newest features of the MySQL, which is called the MySQL Document Store. But before going to the uh, NoSQL or application development, I, I'd like to start with one of the important features you can use today was the newest version of MySQL server named MySQL version 5.7. MySQL 5.7 is the today's newest version in, uh, you can use in production. In MySQL 5.7 and the newer versions, you can use JSON document as part of your data because MySQL Server 5.7 supports JSON data type. So oh, here as it's, it's tiny, but it's a JSON document, you can store into database as it is. And when inserting these records, JSON documents into MySQL Server, MySQL Server do the uh, data validation. So like a number of brackets, things are properly quoted, having a key and a value, or just a JSON string, those will be validated. MySQL Server check you're properly inserting JSON document or not. And you can use a number of SQL functions which manipulates or search JSON document. So this is a new, uh, one of the uh, important feature of MySQL 5.7, which is native JSON data type, which is, means it's not nothing special or uh, tweak, tweak you need. And it has a number of JSON functions. You can compare with existing values. In the same time, MySQL, the RDMS, need index sometimes on your data. You can create index on JSON document. To, do, to create index on top of JSON data type, we also needed another function named generated column. This also can be useful in some applications. For example, here is the information, we are storing numbers. But always, this number needed to be calculated in some way. In this case, we, want, we always want to add one in some use case. This can be more uh, in more realistic scenario. For example, here is a, a number of products, quantity, and you may have another column for price, and you always want to have the total price of that one, you can calculate uh, like this one, adding new column as, this is def defines a, another column is uh, results of a calculation, that's what we call generated column. This generated column is a read-only uh, column. You cannot modify values in here. Then what you can do is you can create a new column based on existing column do, uh, utilizing as function. And you can calculate some, uh, you can do some kind of a calculation, any type of a calculation, and create index over that column you defined as a generated column. Then you can uh, utilize some functions against the JSON document. Here is a manipulation against, against the JSON document. I will explain more details what this means. 
but you can create, uh, you can, uh, sorry, you can fetch a value named of type from the document and push into the column named feature type. And in this layer, it says it's adding index over this feature type. So now uh, virtually you can create index over value of JSON document. You can actually store those generated column value. By default, it's so-called a virtual generated column, but you can actually store the results of a calculation into a column. In this case, you need more space in storage, but you can get a much faster performance. It's still part of the SQL operation. In SQL operation, if you want to search value from the JSON document, you can use a SQL function named the JSON extract function, or you can specify JSON path. JSON path is commonly used like, uh, similar to uh, jQuery or any other uh, uh, JSON related uh, operations. You can use either function or operator like these ones. Now what's the difference between these uh, operators? Only with a single allow, this will returns values with quotation. So if you don't like this quotation, you have to unquote it. But with a single or a double allow like this, it will do the extracting data from JSON document as well as will unquoting. So that's more useful in, uh, in the application. There are a number of different uh, JSON functions. You can use these ones within SQL statements. So again, title of my presentation is not really telling, telling truth for now because my presentation title was saying use MySQL without SQL. But up to here, still, uh, you, still uh, it's a, uh, uh, sorry, the way you are accessing JSON document through SQL statements. Still number of application developers are okay with SQL statements, but not everyone, we do understand. So we're uh, enhancing some of the stuff. Before going to the uh, main topics of today, we are enhancing a uh, feature of these ones, especially the first one to be the most important for the practical use of MySQL as JSON document store or so-called JSON document database. At this moment in MySQL 5.7, if you want to change only one part of JSON document, it can happen. JSON, data, uh, JSON document has a lot of key and value, key and value, and key and value. If you want to change only one value within the document, the document, sorry, single document, at this moment, we need to update the entire document. All the document we need to change. That's a today's implementation, today's MySQL 5.7. We are working on so-called in-place partial update which means here is one big document you have and you're changing only one value. From MySQL 8.0, which is the next major version, you can change only the value in the storage and which makes much, much faster to updating JSON document. Then we f believe this will be the uh, kind of important critical step, MySQL to be a real document database. So that's what we are working on. There are several updates already done in the newest uh, minor version of MySQL 8.0 today as release candidate. A few days ago, we made an announcement. Uh, MySQL 8.0 became the RC, release candidate stage. Uh, that will be the next major version of MySQL. It's, uh, as far as our different team made, made announcement, should be within six months, we will make this version a production version. There are a few more things, but let's go to move on to the next topic, which is today's main topic, MySQL document store. So what is MySQL document store? We want to make MySQL much easier to use Dubai application developers in many usage, especially application developers more and more utilizing JSON documents nowadays. So we are providing 
uh, much more uh, interesting features and the useful functions into uh, MySQL, uh, MySQL. The baseline is yes, we needed to have a proper data store with JSON data type, as well as JSON SQL function, which is already available. So if you if you didn't know uh, JSON data type and JSON function today, you can use it already. But we are adding several more topics needed. One is scaling out, adding more servers to have more performance and must be out of the box, which means without modifying anything, you can utilize it. We already have the first step for this one, so-called MySQL InnoDB cluster or internal functions named the MySQL group replication, which was already addressed by my colleague Ivan in previous presentation. If you're interested, uh, please join the MySQL user group of Taiwan. We are discussing uh, more, uh, news, uh, new, more about group replication. And we want to add new API for ease of use. Then one thing we did is we added a new developer API, so-called, uh, we call XDev API, which is CRUD API, CRUD, C-R-U-D. I remember some of you are familiar with what CRUD, C-R-U-D stands for, create, read, update, and delete, rather than using SQL statements. Here's a short example saying something like this. Let's see uh, how it goes in the next, uh, next slides and so on. But before showing the, uh, some source code, we, uh, I, I'd like to briefly talk about uh, overview of the, uh, overview, sorry, overview of XDev API, how it works, or document store, how it works. From application point of view, some front end layer, presentation layer, and back end layer, uh, including business logics. It's talk with MySQL using CRUD API or CRUD request, and you may send a JSON document. Results, all results are coming in JSON format, not the result set. In the traditional LDBMS JDBC uh, application development, what you send is a SQL statement. What you get is a result set. But a document in document store, what you, you will send is a request plus JSON, and you will get JSON as a result. Let's look into a more, bit more details. From your application, you kick the XDev API of connectors. Connectors equals dri JDBC driver. In MySQL, we call connector J, which is JDBC driver from MySQL. You kick the uh, XDev API. It will talk with X plugin, which is a new plugin of MySQL server, via new protocol of for MySQL named X protocol. This X protocol use internally using a proto buffer from Google, and it's it's over TCP/IP. That's the same as before. Then those CRUD API, uh, those XDB API plus JSON documents are translated into SQL by this X plugin. So from your application point of view, you never know your, uh, your uh, requests are internally converted into the SQL and all results from X plugin is JSON. So this is just a brief overview. It says the premise the same, you know, same thing in the previous slide. It's Internally, uh, it's using or all commands are serialized by protocol buffer image, and uh, you get uh, you, your trunk communication will be over X protocol, which is a different port number comparing from existing MySQL protocol, legacy protocol. We use a, a port number three three zero six as a traditional port number, but a MySQL server or actually the X plugin will open another TCP IP port. By default, it uses uh, 10 times of the MySQL uh, legacy protocol. So 33060 is a the number. There are a lot of new components in, within MySQL document store. 
First of all, this is a, a core function of X, X, uh, sorry, document store is named the MySQL X plugin. It will speak X protocol, new uh, protobuffer uh, proto based uh, uh, new uh, pro communication protocol between server and the client. It speaks CRUD API and it's translate from CRUD API to internal SQL statements of MySQL server. X protocol is based on the Google's protobuffer and it does support asynchronous communication between client and server. We are already implemented so-called expectations for the, this asynchronous operation when applications sending multiple requests at a time and you receive the results in asynchronously. Sometimes you may get error in between. So what, how server to do? Whether server to continue even if in case of error in those asynchronous operation, communication or in case of error, just uh, cancel whole thing. So so-called expectations to server from client. That's implemented in this new protocol. I skip it in ODB cluster. XDB API, I will show the uh, re, uh, real example, real world example of this XDB API later, new APIs and MySQL 8.0 and the newer version. We are making MySQL shell to be the new standard client program of MySQL. If you are using MySQL today, you are using MySQL command line client, just MySQL, but MySQL shell to be the next generation of MySQL client. I will show you the, uh, show you the demonstration of this one too. Lastly, MySQL connectors, it's new drivers. And JDBC driver eight is a de designed for the MySQL server version eight is already implementing the uh, XDB API supporting new X protocol. Coming back to InnoDB cluster, it's also based on the, uh, the uh, sorry, administration, sorry, administration of InnoDB cluster internally relying on the XDB API and so on, also using the MySQL shell as a client. So that's why it's here and MySQL shell, by the way, uh, sorry, my InnoDB cluster, by the way, this is a multi-master replication package support uh, including the software router, which is, uh, controls communication between server and client. So new MySQL environment looks like this. On, left, on your left hand side, here is a legacy MySQL server components speaks or standard protocol, port number using 3306, talking with MySQL server via SQL. In MySQL 5.6, on, on your right hand side, there is a plug, sorry, at the bottom, there's a, there is a plugin for MySQL server named the Memocached API. If your application is already talking with Memocached, Memocached is an open source based distributed cache. So if your application, sometimes some web application or number of web, applica web applications are using this Memocached, if your application capable, it's already possible to talk with X, uh, Memcached. If you in, uh, install this plugin, starting from MySQL 5.6, supported in 5.7, MySQL ca server can speak Memcached protocol. Memcached is a key value data store. And key is mapped into one column of a table. Value was, will be mapped into the another column of the table and you can configure by the prefix of those keys. If prefix was ABC, that will use a combination of this column and that column, but if pre prefix was different, it will use another tables, another columns, and so on. That's already available. So actually MySQL has been, MySQL is already from MySQL 5.6, it's a NoSQL capable LDBMS because it supports key value API. But also we are adding new protocol plugin named the X plugin. Now it speaks new protocol. It supports CRUD API, not only key value, it's a CRUD based and 
supports JSON over uh, the MySQL's new protocol, you can fully utilize MySQL as a document database. So X protocol, it uh, supports asynchronous operations, which I already mentioned. It can do the pipelining, with, which means you can send a multiple or request at a time and wait response when server push gives a push, notifi no push notification back into the driver. It of course supports uh, lots of open standards. It supports SSL or SSL. I'm not much familiar with that one, but the protocol buffer is uh, open source implementation of the communication uh, serial, uh, data serialization, sorry, object serialization. XDB API, it's a kind of core component of, uh, of the uh, uh, core part of the today's presentation. It's fluent API, or some people call it method chain. There must be some difference between fluent API and a method chain. I'm not much familiar with those differences, but you will see this methods dot methods dot methods and execute it. It's just like a stream. CLUD is not a, a select statement or SQL statements anymore, but this API also supports SQL operations if you need it. Supports a lot of different uh, connectors, existing connectors. Uh, of course, JDBC driver from MySQL, but if you're uh, fam uh, uh, familiar with Node.js, we also now support Node.js via uh, this XDEV API. So let's see more details of each APIs, but a basic design is like this. We try to uh, have a similar API for the relational tables and the JSON documents. So whenever we are search, uh, uh, creating new records, in a SQL statement, we usually type insert a statement, but now we are having the insert method rather than insert a statement. And for the document, correction is a, a represent, a correction represents document for the database, uh, in the database. And we can add new records as if it's just like inserting new data. Select statements are now converted into the correction.find method. Similarly, for the del, uh, updates and delete, we are having uh, the corresponding uh, Method each me methods for each. Then there are lots of operations against a session collection, and finally it's getting some uh, some data. Here is an example of the find method doing uh, doing against the document. Here's a find function, and here's a condition to searching data. A lots of different APIs. I will come back this presentation, uh, uh, this page after showing the uh, real examples. This is already in our uh, reference manual, by the way, so you can see these ones. And the MySQL shell. This is a new, next generation, new generation of MySQL client. It has a lot of um, administ uh, sorry, administrative APIs as well as development API. And MySQL client program today only supports SQL. But now it supports JavaScript and Python. Unfortunately, Java itself is not supported because we need uh, conversational operations. So script language was our only option for now. But these APIs, for in XDEV API, I will show a real example, but between different programming languages, we try to have the really similar format, or usually the same format, among different programming languages to create application. And it gives you the different results depending on operations. So first, Okay, so this is a new client named MySQL shell. 
it already looks somewhat different on the left hand side. It's a bit colorful than before. And we can uh, do the, a lot of administrative operation with these tools. To avoid a mistake, I prepared, I prepared a lot of commands here. The first, of, uh, first thing I need to do here is starting MySQL server. This console is do the not only the data manipulation or creating tables. I can start new instance via command start a sandbox instance. Before doing this, I needed, I needed to crea create sandbox instance, but same, dba dot create, uh, I believe create or deploy, I forgot. Sorry, deploy. Before starting this, I needed to deploy this new sandbox instance with port number, and now I'm booting new sandbox instance. Yes, it's booted already, it's there. So let's connect to this server. But how uh, to connect to my ser uh, server is different from the uh, usual way. Rather, con using my client, I'm already in the client. I'm connecting like this. And the one difference from the regular my server connection, port number is not 3306. Yes, I already specified port number 3310, uh, and, but uh, still one more zero because I'm connecting via X protocol. So in this protocol, I can talk with MySQL server without SQL uh, statement or with the SQL statement. But as you see the uh, left-hand side of the console, it says JS. I'm in the, currently in the JavaScript mode. But some of you prefer to manipulate MySQL in legacy way. In that case, type SQL and show tables. Yes, just like as usual. I already wrote the test, exam, test data, so I already have the tables. But again, hey, you know, the title presentation today was saying using MySQL without SQL statement. So let's switch to the different language, whoops. Sorry. Oops. Dropped. Excuse me. Switching between languages slash SQL bring you to the uh, SQL mode, slash JS bring you to the JavaScript mode. And rather than typing the show or, or use, uh, use schema, db equals session dot get the schema. This session object, I will explain again, but session object nearly equals your current communication with, my, uh, with MySQL server. Then session object, uh, sorry, the db object dot command named get tables command, get tables method. This is exactly the same in JavaScript and Python as well as Java you get the results of tables, list of tables in, this is actually the JSON, uh, JSON string. This is data is already in JSON format, but doesn't look like JSON. Yes, no worries, I'll show you. And one more thing you might realize, in previous uh, command, I typed as a show tables right here. Show tables gives you four tables, but, get the tables command gives you only three tables. What's the difference between? Because there is one table is not recognized by XDB API as a table, which is recognized as a correction. Collection, sorry. Correction is a storage of a JSON document. And there's internally there is a couple of different definitions. Correction, table to be a correction must have the JSON data type column as well as a generated column, uh, gen, uh, sorry, generated column extracting the ID data from JSON document and so on. There are several requirements, but MySQL server automatically uh, recognize, or you can create new corrections. But let's search data in the uh, collection. 
So I already typed several things. Oh, before executing it. One more step we need to uh, generate a collection object. Yes, you're, you're from Java, Java uh, development world. So I need an object, a class name in front. It should be the collection class. Session.schema.getCollection uh, creates a new object, named the collection object, named the country info, uh, sorry, the uh, object name is a CLOCI, collection CI, in short. And against this uh, object named the uh, call CI, if I typed find method, Oops. so typing like this call dot find, you will get results in JSON. This is a already part of the XDB API, XDB API world. And, okay, here's too many e outputs. I want to fill, I want to have the limited number of results. Limit, block at two. Now you only get two JSON documents only. You can modify this uh, command, the method chain much longer to get different results. For example, you don't need the entire information. All you need is name of the country and continent. That's all you needed. You filter with a function named the fields function, and you get only the, uh, sorry, one more thing I filtered. I also need a country starting with T. So I only get the list of countries including Taiwan, and its continent, Asia, that's all. Similar to the uh, more filter I want to do, I want to sort by the country's GNP, because original data, JSON document here, right here, including the GNP information. So let's uh, sort by the GNP. It's too long to type, so just copy and paste. At the end, I added a, the one more method, sort, dot, sort bracket, and any text string just you know, in it, it's already sorted. But with some reason, Taiwan is the bottom. Why? Because Taiwan's GNP among these T countries, Taiwan is the largest. I prefer Taiwan to be on the top. Reverse order. There we go. Now Taiwan is on the top of the list because I changed the sort order by desk. It's similar to SQL inside. Yes, it's internally it's just like a SQL is inside. But wait, I'm still typing JS. JavaScript never read Java, of course. So let's go to the real Java world. So welcome to the uh, Eclipse, but this is just like a legacy, legacy JDBC programming without using any uh, connection pooling, any third party libraries, no app servers. But when you're, but it's like, you know, written in the textbook, uh, you know, when you learn, you know, Java JDBC programming at the first moment, first you need a uh, driver manager to bring in the MySQL driver, he has a connection ULI, and create, uh, so based on this connection object, create a statement object, put it into the SQL statement uh, on the execution query. It was you know, one, one way, there are lots of different ways, and you get the results. This is the legacy, legacy JDBC programming. It's already having the inter, uh, one enhancement in MySQL. I need to remove this one first. And let's see, let's, what is the results? Whoops. I only removed this one. What? Okay, this one is causing issue. I only needed this one. Okay. So 
So oh, this is a legacy JDBC coding on left hand side, as you see. But right hand side, what you get is, um, yeah, well, it's not easy to see, but it looks like a JSON document. Well, in the application to use this record, maybe this format is good enough. But in some case, it's not human friendly. So that's why you can add a function named JSON pretty, just a SQL function of MySQL, and execute it. Now it looks much better, more human readable. Uh, JSON layout, the so-called JSON pretty SQL function in MySQL. But this, again, this is not the NoSQL programming. Let's go to the real NoSQL programming. And this is just a sample, exam, uh, sample application, so there are lots of missing pieces or some, you know, spe uh, definition I need to be better, but here how it looks like. Starting with session factory is generating new uh, uh, factory and generate getting session. Key point would be right here. I'm generating a new session. And a URI, that's a different from the leg legacy JDBC coding. Not talking about JDBC, because this is not the legacy JDBC coding. It's starting with MySQL X, MySQL X colon, host name, port number, target schema of MySQL, user, user password, SSL connection, whatever the use specify in JDBC as well. URI itself is exactly similar to the uh, JDBC. Next step, I'm getting the schema. This is just a uh, kind of practice. Session dot get the default schema reads information right here. Which schema I'm connecting to. This is just kind of more like a debug debug purpose. It's similar to the typing select a database a statement in MySQL in a, or SQL statements. But I, I just, this one is just for the debugging purpose or just testing. Go to next. It's creating a new object named the schema object, uh, SCH world X, get the schema world X and getting the schema into the schema, uh, schema object and Against this schema, typing get the collection, country info. So we are t targeting, uh, fetching the uh, collection, JDBC documents from the country info table. Then main portion of this program is here. Find a statement to be, find a statement object contains just like a SQL statement itself, but not a SQL statement list of methods. The first one is find only, no other information, and at the end, it will print. Bottom of the uh, program is just printing the results, but not using result set. It's a result uh, using so-called doc results instead of result set. So cleaning up this console and try to execute, find method, It returns well, some, some results. Let's switch this one to the next one. So next one, just like a things written in the comment, in the SQL select statements, you may filter records by column name like something. Similar thing we can do in the find method. So it returns all the information, country, countries, where is country's name, here we go. Country names starting with T. Togo or what, which one is this, Thailand. It returns all the countries information of country names starting with T. Commercial time. So if we change, uh, uh, ne I don't know, next method, limit at the end, it's a limit. So I will output only up to two countries, in this case, truck and, uh, and the toggle, and no more, no less. 
and we can change it with a lot of methods depending on the requirements. So this one is name and geography dot continent because the original JSON document has the sub entries. This will, this will be better to show. So this information under the geography category, there's information like continent and the region. So this one is also saying geography.continent. And this method returns only, uh, so this command only returns country, na country name and continent only. And you can add more and more conditions up as much as you want. Let's skip to the uh, middle ones at the bottom. Name, uh, sorry, the object, uh, sorry, con uh, correction CI. Uh, they want to have the country like uh, studying with T, region is East Asia, and that, that records, uh, all I need is a name and the continent of that record and the sorting by the GNP. So what, what kind of results we get? Yep, only one country, Taiwan came out with results. I didn't have to, I don't have to sort the results, but this is a one way we can um, type a lot of different commands. Again, for example, the, the last methods. Okay, this one, just copy from Java, bring back to JavaScript, Oh, I forgot to define. Server gone away. Nice. Yes, I. Okay. Oh, no, this console, sorry. And I need to uh, specify the object first. Correction, uh, correction CI is coming from the country object. Country info, sorry. And the copy from copy from Eclipse and paste into the JavaScript console, still gives you the exactly the same results. So we try to keep the uh, same API between Java, Python, JavaScript, and all other languages as similar as possible, having the methods chain like these ones. So that's how we develop this XDEV API. So more details. Um, I, we have a reference manual. Here is key components from the, uh, here's key classes as well as interfaces of XDB API in the connector J. You start with sessions. You need to have a session which specifies a connection between client and server, where my server is. But in MySQL 8, what we are targeting is this session still to be the abstract connection to the real server. Which means in the uh, MySQL group replication configuration or InnoDB cluster, which is a multi-master configuration, you can change data anywhere. Application do not have to know the exact name of the database. This abstract, abstract connection information, here's a server, servers, no single server, maybe multiple servers, but you just talk with anyone. Then, against this session, you can operate a lot of uh, commands and so on. JSON document to be stored as a collection object in the MySQL XDB API, and results of the operation, JSON document is so called uh, stored into so called uh, DB doc uh, object. This is already written in the present, previous presentation, uh, sorry, the previous demo, creating a session factory and get a session with certain ULI. And next step, uh, sorry, the key, things, key methods in the session, get a schema and a schema name will generate a new schema object. You want to know the, which is default schema? There's a method for it. It was uh, in the, my, my uh, quick example as well. You can also create or drop schema. Just like uh, typing create a database in MySQL or drop database in MySQL. Session dot create a schema, schema name. 
and you can actually copy schema existing ones in another methods in the uh, session, uh, session class, or you can directly type in the SQL statement and you can ex execute if you want. Oh, by the way, by default, even if you executed a SQL statement from this SQL state, uh, statement uh, class, you can get the result in JSON format or table structure as a result set, whichever you want. Well, of course, you have to specify options. Collection object, sorry, collection class or collection interface is a repre represents documents of the, uh, multiple documents of the, uh, stored in MySQL server. Sorry, multiple documents stored in MySQL server. And you will select, update, delete, no, using the uh, CRUD API to manipulate those data. Collections are a, a group of JSON documents in XDB API. So oh, got a session already against this session. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, you got a schema. Against a schema, you get a collection, collection name and you can create collection. DBDoc is a JSON uh, itself, and it's, it's a MySQL version of JSON's object. You either, you can actually create, generate JSON document manually, or well, you know, some reasons you may need this one to transfer to MySQL server. When you're updating records with JSON, JSON format, you may want to have this kind of you know, operation, uh, sorry, the uh, sorry, expressions to generate a new JSON document and push into MySQL server, or results are coming in the JSON format, typing some commands, execute it, and it will be returned into the doc result object, and on the way, fetching the JSON document one by one, you can print it one by one. In my example, I skipped this step, and uh, using doc results dot uh, uh, fetch next, uh, so fetch all and uh, fetch, fetch everything at a time. But you can choose either way. So this is a totally different way of the developing application comparing from legacy C corporations, but uh, we are enhancing this uh, feature more and more. But let's come back to the find methods as we seen earlier. It's starting with just like selecting all records, where clause is here, or list of fields, group by having order by, and limit and it's offset. You can do the binding, like a prepared statement as well. So this is just like a um, uh, SQL, but we are uh, stepping into next way. So I will upload this presentation after the event. I need to know where to upload, uh, but I'll, I'll find out. And this is a new way of developing an application with MySQL with and without SQL statements, so-called MySQL document store. We are adding more and more new features. There are some uh, repository uh, of documents and uh, reference manuals. It's already available. If you're interested in more details, we have booths on upstairs. Please visit us. Also, or if you join the MySQL user group of Taiwan, uh, we are uh, uh, providing the, some uh, small souvenir today. So if you are not yet a member of the user group or you joined a member already in this room, please visit our booth and we exchange our, uh, some small gifts with you. Okay, thank you for joining and enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I, I have two very simple questions. Sure. The first one is, can we have JSON type in the table? And the second one is, uh, can we create a collection from a table? Just like we create a view for a table. Sure. So first question is, can we have the JSON uh, data type in the, uh, in the table? Yes, the answer is yes. I'm having a stroke. So here's one simple table with JSON data type in the column. There's another tables, I forgot which, is, which one, um, but uh, another tables having the JSON t t type as well. So you can ha have there any tables with JSON data type. Here we go, here's the one. So uh, another table name is T table. 
also have the JSON data type. Another question was, can we create a collection actually uh, from the existing table? Answer is yes. Actually, the this country table uh, is the, sorry, the uh, table we created as a collection from the beginning. But you can actually create another uh, existing table as a collection as well, vice versa. We can use this one as a table. In a SQL, yes, already, but APIs, you can tell, uh, you need one method uh, when gathering, uh, sorry, schema object dot, uh, schema object dot get dot collection as a table and a collection name, you can manipulate with the SQL methods. Now, we're going to go to this point. Thank you.